Hi everyone, Alan here. Yeah, I'm sat in Blackburn Town Centre once again. Um, yeah, I went to Preston yesterday. They were pretty good. But I was going to go today for the boot fair, but uh, I decided not to. I just hope everybody's having a, having a great day. Myself, I'm, I'm pretty good. I just hope uh, everybody's having a great day. I went to the chippery today to have some dinner. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant once again. Um, the food there is really good. It's really good and uh, I really enjoyed it. Looks like that scooter's here. That, that scooter usually parks outside uh, one of the shops outside on the Northgate but he must be doing some sh he must be doing some business in town. Yeah. So I'm sat here at the moment. Um it's just after twelve and I thought I'd I'd just have a I'll just have a walk round and all that. Right. For what I am about to say, people might might uh, hate me for. But who is running the United States? I really do feel that. To, Yes, even though he had, he had uh, outbursts and everything, but um, yeah, I think Joe Biden has he had a stroke or something, pulling the troops out of Afghanistan. You know, he could have took his time, could have took his time lot. You know. It should have lengthened the time, really. But how I mean by that is withdrawing the troops at a, at a really slow pace. I mean a really slow pace. Uh, at a snail's pace. That's what they should have done. Not doing the way he's doing it. Well, to be truthful, I'm going to be frank, frank with everybody. He makes he makes his country look like like uh, that the Americans are idiots, and that's the way he's, that's the way he's done it. And Boris, don't go along with him. I think really we should keep English troops there a bit longer. And you know get our get the people who used to work for us out. Um and what we should be really to be doing is if people come here, you know we should sort it, you know, we should sort it. If they, if they can drive, get them driving lorries, you know. Get them doing jobs instead of floundering around in hotels. Um, but the major thing is, we have problems here. We have severe problems here. We have problems with housing. Where would we put them all? You know. 
what we sh <laughs> you know, what we should be doing is turning around and saying, well, if you want a house, you're going to have to build it yourself. You know what I mean? God, Bennett. You know. We've got lots. We've got lots of our own sleeping rough on the streets. Never mind other, other nationalities, Afghans and stuff. It's gonna. If we were to take in every single refugee that there was, the island would sink. The government would fall. And, basically. You know, we wouldn't be able to keep, we won't be able to, you know, sort our own population out. The NHS is an absolute, is 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 an absolute shambles. You know, waiting lists uh, over five years long. You know, what are they going to, what are they going to do about that? I think it's about time I think I think it's about time that some of these private hospitals were nationalized you know get them to do some get them to do the work you know cuz a lot of them are basically sitting there empty you know so I reckon it's about time some of them uh did the donkey work and this thing about uh, pres prescriptions, yes, they're going to start charging everybody for prescriptions, 2.4 million of us. Um, folks, you're going to have to, we're going to have to stand up and stand up and say no to this, you know. Um, also... One of the things we should be asking for is to kick Pretty Patel out the Home Office, because uh, you know she's costing this country money, which we could probably spend on something else. Probably get these NHS waiting lists down, you know. Um, yeah. So I'm just sat here in Blackburn Town Centre at the moment, as you most probably can make out. And I'm just uh, sat here having a... Having a tango moment. So Blackcurrant... Uh, what is it, Blackcurrant? It's dark berry, sugar-free. Yeah? Which is pretty good. There you go, there's the ambulance coming. Ambulance siren. And uh, yeah. It's just one of those things, isn't that? Our country's going to end up falling to pieces again. And Nigel is right. It's about time we all made a stand. And uh, if we don't sort this country out, nobody else will. Well, I'm just sat outside the uh, market, which, well, bit of a mess. I'm going to do an, shall, shall I do an interview? Shall I do an interview with someone? Shall I get somebody on the, on the channel? Because the other day, I went through uh, some of the stories on Google, and the amount of 
um, jobless in the Lan in the East Lancashire area has basically gone up. Um, because there's something happening here, but nobody's saying anything. Um, we're just waiting to see what's happening here. Why are people? Why? Why is the unemployment number in the? East Lancashire area rising as it is you know because there are more and more and more companies there are companies moving into the area but why is this happening you know are, are there basically skill shortages are there uh, jobs that people in East Lancashire can't fill because they don't have the skill set I don't know is is East Lancashire going to be going to turn it turn into a shall we say ghost town or is this area going to be basically uh, non-employed, like some some like some parts of the country are already experiencing that? We don't know. It's just a wait and see situation. The other thing is, you can't get. You can't get an NHS dentist, of which I'm finding out. In some areas, in some areas, it, the waiting times are approximately five years before you can actually get uh, an NHS dentist. Absolute, and they're training absolutely thousands of them. But where are these thousands of dentists going? You know, dental students and stuff. Where they're going? I tell you where they're going. They're going straight in. They, they do their training at a NHS dental practice. Then once they've done their training at the NHS dental practice, they turn round and say, "NHS an NHS uh, position for me is basically uh, not economically viable." So they go into private practice instead. That is the reason why um, there are very few NHS dentists now. So we'll just have to wait. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. So we'll just have to wait and see. And plus, I really do think that the population in in the East Lancashire area is getting older, a lot older, in some parts. Um, I don't know if this is true or not, but uh, you know, in a lot of you know a lot of places in around here, the towns are actually dying. I went into Accrington uh, a while back and, uh, well, their shopping area looks worse than ours and, uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what happens and, uh, yeah, it's not good. It's not good at all here at all. Maybe some of these Afghans have, you know, uh, skills that uh, we need, like bricklayers and stuff like that. Yeah, we could probably teach them some modern 
modern construction methods and stuff. Well, we'll just have to wait and see what happens because this, this country is turning into an absolute god, goddamn mess. Because we keep getting involved with other people's wars and, uh, you know, it's time that uh, Mr Johnson pulled his finger out and, uh, you know, sorted everything out. Um, here's some suggestions for Mr Sunak. Uh, dear Chancellor, I want you to make some changes. Severe changes. Are you alright? Um, Mr Sunak, I want to make you to make some, um, some changes. Please make the following changes. I want to see, I want to have uh, excise duty on cigarettes increased by 50%. Reason why I want this to happen is so that the money raised from the revenue can go straight to the NHS. To, bl uh, to uh, plug their fund, you know, plug the funding so that all those people who smoke will be made to pay for prescriptions you know for the price of uh, prescriptions you know, so, so you wouldn't have to uh, charge, you know ask people to pay for them two all tobacco products all tobacco products uh, should increase in price. Um, next one will be fuel duty, right? Put put fuel duty up, right? Increase fuel duty, except for diesel. Except for diesel, so that whole. Matter of fact, I dropped the price of diesel for hauliers and uh, rail freight. Another thing is make it viable so that certain towns can have uh, rail freight terminals, so that so that um, lorries don't have to travel as far across the country to collect their freight. That's an idea, you know, of of mine. So that uh, lorries, so lorries don't, so lorries don't have to travel across the country. They can just, they can just pick their load up off the back of a train. It's, you know, it's like they do at uh, docks, like dock sides at Liverpool. That's another thing. Try and move, try and move more freight onto railways because that would be that would be a bit more of an incentive and then lorry drivers don't have to drive as far which would save save money on fuel so you know it's just one of those things isn't it I've got quite a fair few ideas to to um, you know, I'd like I'd like to give, but at this moment in time, I'm I'm just waiting for uh, some waiting for things to happen. Um, the other thing is, if you can, people, if you can, join a. Wholesale club like Costco because if you do that you can take well you can take two people in with you and you can buy twice you can buy three times as much than going into an average store. But <coughs> people think I'm crazy. 
men uh, you know saying that and, and encouraging people to do that but you know sometimes these things have to be done and it's just one of those things well I'm gonna bugger off now and shove this video up there will be a number of videos going up today um, and we'll see what's happening so I'm gonna all Oh, a big massive shout out to all the usual suspects Helen's crowd loud and proud I haven't seen anything of Leroy of late I thought the guy's alright also visit Fowled Coast uh, she did a, a piece you know I think she did a piece on the at the lifeboat house I think it is uh, and I think Take a Walk on the Wild Side did, did a piece as well um, of the lifeboat going out doing training and stuff like that um, he also did a, a thing on Not End Not End Ferry really enjoyed that it was something completely totally different I didn't know the Not End Ferry was that small you know I thought it was a lot bigger than that. Far a lot bigger than that. So, you know. Uh, who else? Uh, Colin, building Blackpool better. Really enjoyed your last uh, video. Also, I'd like to say a big shout out to Beyond the Edge. Um, really enjoyed... I really enjoy his stuff. Also, PT Vlogs. <coughs> <coughs> They've been doing the travelling travelling first scene of late. I really enjoyed the last one. You know, I really look forward to it. And who else was there? Uh, Sloffy Blogs. Oh dear, the look on his face when he went on that rap, that uh, that uh, super roundup sort of thing. Uh, he nearly ended up, he nearly ended up puking, did the lad? Uh, you know, it, you know, good on him for going on there. You know, it, I, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to stomach it. I tell you, I just wouldn't. Um, yeah, quite a lot of quite a lot of guide dogs around today. Uh, yeah, so we'll just wait and see. I'm just getting a bit of the ambience of the of the town centre see what it's like so very soon I'm gonna next time I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go for the £2.50 shirts uh, next time so you know just one of those things that happens Yeah. Yeah. Just sit here for a short while. And get a bit of the ambience of the town centre. We will put some, uh, I will put this up later on today. Special shout out to Philip O'Connor.